conscious. To make you conscious of that. And they want to do catharsis of whatever you have told. Our rishis went further than that. They want to get rid of this once for and all. The problem with psychology is that that what is told they are bringing out, but you are storing more and more again and again. It's like bringing all this garbage out of the basement and throwing it out. But every day you are putting new garbage in. So it is never, the psychology will never succeed because the same thing is being repeated. You, you are getting rid of certain repressions and suppressions, but you are putting new suppressions, new inside. That's good business. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. That's why, that's why, you know, in China, they had this law. A doctor would be assigned 500 patients and doctor will be paid X number of, you know, dollars. And they say that if your patient becomes sick, then your salary will be cut because you, you are in the business of making them healthy, keeping them healthy. That's the wonderful thing, isn't it? Here more sick people are, doctors make more. They say no. You will make more if none of your patients become sick. If they become sick, your salary would be cut. So this Rishi says that psychology would not completely succeed because they are doing is in Gujarati I would say Andharu You know, you cannot bring, you know, a pot and take out of darkness, you know, bit by bit. You will never succeed. So whatever she says, there is a better way and then you want. Years of darkness, thousand years of darkness, thousand janmas of darkness can be removed by bringing a light, a small light. That is enlightenment. So what meditation is doing is not only making conscious, <coughs> you make you conscious of the unconscious, and the repressed feelings and bow that you have, but transcend that into super consciousness, and then into collective consciousness, and then reaching the ultimate, which is known as cosmic consciousness or samadhi, or whatever name you want. Or in terms of Yoga Sutra, you know, you read Sahasra, which is the seventh chakra, you know, in, in the tributary of seventh you know, chakra. That is the principle of transforming the Sushupta energy, which is Kundalini, and then making your energy move upwards and ultimately reaching to Sahasra. But the idea is to reach to the upper layers of consciousness which they knew with the modern psychology <coughs> we know maybe hundred years later. Another interesting aspect of meditation, those people who have studied sleep, they have come to the conclusion that when you sleep, you really sleep only for 10 minutes. You know, if you sleep 6 or 7 hours, the total sushupti, total sleep, where you don't think at all, where you have no thoughts, because you are dreaming constantly. A dream is nothing but thinking. So most of the time in the sleep also, your mind doesn't stop. You are constantly dreaming. But out of six or seven hours, 
the nature forces you into a meditative state. That that means of sleep, that is a pure, thoughtless sleep. Nature forces you in the meditative state. And they say that that ten minutes of total sleep is enough for your energy for next day's work. For twelve hours of work, that ten minutes of thoughtless sleep when you are connected, the total energy of the universe, you are connected with it when you are thoughtless. That transfer of energy out of the universe into you, which is forced upon you by nature, is enough for you for next day, next day's work. Now think about that. Unfortunately at that time you are not conscious. It is a forced meditation by nature where you are totally unconscious. Meditation, as I define it, is nothing but consciously creating the state which nature forces you at night for ten minutes. So imagine, imagine you can create that thoughtlessness for a minute, consciously. Imagine that you can do it for two minutes, three minutes. How much energy you will have created. So another way of looking is that if you want to have energy, and that is nothing but your connection with the output, the universal energy. Meditation, if you can succeed in creating that gap and thought here. Consciously, that that is so much energy you cannot believe. You, you absolutely cannot imagine. So that the you know goal, a side goal of meditation. But where is, where does that energy come from? That's the universal energy. You are connected with it when you are not thinking. Not thinking. You, you are totally. That's the no mind state. No meter, nothing. nothing. You don't have <laughs> so people who have more energy and people who don't have energy can be related like what we are. Well, you know, it, it is related because I think I believe that all creative, you know, pure creativity comes out of that state. You know, whether it is created consciously or unconsciously, that is where the creativity comes, when you are connected with the universal energy. So mostly, more <coughs> part of the possibility of forced 10 minutes in a job. Well, unfortunately, there is no correlation, you know, how much do you sleep. Because if you sleep, you know, 10 hours and you are still dreaming all the time, you know, it is the quality of the sleep. That's why this Mahabir and all, they sleep more than 10 minutes. You know, they, 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 they need a sleep. Actually. No, they, they, what they need is this, their body is slept, but they were fully aware. Okay, it is said that Buddha and Mahabir, they were turned to the other side. Okay, they could pass over to them. Then they were turned. And Ananda would be wondering, he would ask, Lord, what are you doing? Whole night you are on one side. He said, Buddha says, Ananda, don't you know my body says, I am fully awake. <laughs> I never sleep. The last point I want to make, last point I want to make. Although I say all these things about meditation and the benefits and, you know, preparation for this, and all the things I have told you, don't ever do meditation if you have to do it. If you have to do it, don't do it. 
because Gorakdas has said beautifully. Gorakdas has said beautifully. Hasiba Kheliba Dhariba Jhana. Hasiba Kheliba Dhariba Jhana. If you don't enjoy doing it, if you cannot laugh doing it, if you cannot consider it as a cave doing it, if you don't enjoy it, if you have to do it, first of all you will never do it. <laughs> so don't do it. If it is a chore, you have to do it. Don't take it seriously. It is not a serious affair at all. Okay? Those who play poker, they play poker just for fun of it. Okay? Some people do exercise just for fun of it. They can't do without it. If it is a playful thing, if it brings you joy, don't worry if you didn't do for 10 days. I wouldn't worry about it. It's not a thing to worry. <laughs> Another imposition, I have to do this. No, forget it. Don't do it. Nobody compares you to do anything. Because this is a non doing. That would be gain weight. Eh? If you don't exercise, you gain weight. Why? Why? <laughs> what is the body? You are, it is going to go anyway. Okay? It's going to go anyway. Don't worry. Don't worry. No, but worry is the worst. Okay? Worry is worse than not losing weight. That's my point. Stress is more harmful to your body than body fat. Let me put it that way. So, golden principle. With all the benefits and everything, the ultimate you know, aim of realizing truth and everything doesn't mean a thing if you can't enjoy it. Majavagarnu kaipad karvu khatarnak che khasu. Don't do it if you don't enjoy it. Okay? Nobody compels you to do anything. You are free to live miserably. <laughs> You're right. Okay. Thank you very much for listening and open more questions. But before that, let's have a break. Okay. Now what is that second word? That is the drasta. That is the sakshi. So all, <coughs> all techniques of meditation, and there are 112, you know, Shiva taught Parvati. Parvati asked Shiva, that I attain truth, Lord, by just surrendering completely to you. But there are many people who can't surrender. To, to them, bhakti mark is not their way. They are reason oriented. So how would they attain to truth and Shiva says, look Parvati, here are 112 meditation techniques that I promise you that billions of people who are born and they will die and billions will be born again. It's not possible that one of these 112 techniques will not apply to them if they want to pursue the truth. And are they listed? Are they They're listed, yeah. We can, Vaigya and Bharav, the, 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 the 112 techniques listed. In, in Vaigya? Bhairav Tantra. Okay. And all techniques of meditation, any technique ever designed, whether it is Buddha, Mahavir, Gurakna, Gurugnath is another great giant who has designed meditative techniques in Tantra. Okay? As great as Mahavir or Buddha in my view. We don't know much about Gurugnath, but he was a great giant in spiritual field. But all these meditative techniques, all have one thing in common that creates this Sakshima. That that Krishna is talking in Gita. All that it does is makes you how to become a witness. Right. Now if you develop that Sakshi Bhav, the Stabha, then all 
your problems are solved because you become a witness to everything that is happening. One of the problems why we don't reach that Sakshiba is the language, you know. Our language has done tremendous harm to ourselves. Tremendous harm to ourselves. Why? Because right from the childhood we have been conditioned to believe that everything happens is to me. When I am hungry, I said I am hungry. You can never be hungry. The real language that should be used is what? I am aware that my body is hungry. You are that awareness, that pure consciousness. You are that trusta. You are that sakshi. You can't be hungry. But we never say that. We say, I am hungry. When you are sick, what do you say? I am sick. You can't be sick. All you have to say is that I am aware that my body has a disease or my body is sick. But we never say that. Now, where from the childhood you are identifying yourself with the body and the sickness, and anger. You say, I am angry. You can't ever be angry. All you can say is, I am aware that anger is arisen in me or in my heart. But we never say that. It is a tremendous disadvantage. Why? Because you are conditioned to believe. You are identifying yourself completely with your body. So meditation is a technique to reach you to that witnessing state of your being. And what Krishnamurti says that the greatest miracle in the world, people are saying that, you know, Christ made, you know, this dead body awake and all that, that's nonsense, okay? Ram Krishna was asked, you know, what miracle have you produced? Okay. This guy is walking on the water. So Ram Krishna said, you know, here is Charana. I will have told this Navi can he will take me. What's the big deal? I was not producing that kind of a miracle. Miracle of miracle is <coughs> when you increase the awareness. When you increase the awareness and you you reach that state of no mind that I will be talking about, that awareness becomes too aged. Everything that you are observing, you are being aware of. You see that person who sees. The person, the awareness, returns to itself and reveals itself. That's the miracle of all miracles. There is no miracle bigger than that. The observer becomes the observed in the process.